Oh, hey, okay, it's seven minutes until the Miami Heat game, uh, game one of round two of the playoffs. Let's not waste any time here. Uh, I don't expect you to remember any of this. There's not going to be a quiz. I just want to make a couple of points about algebra and what it's like to learn algebra. Uh, and let's just st get started, and then I'll, I'll kind of make the points later on. All right, let's talk about chess. Right, look at that. I'm holding up a chess board. Uh, can you see that all right? Maybe not too good. Let me slide over here a little bit, get my butt over here. Fantastic, there's the chessboard. Now, I'll try and keep that there. It's not much of a chessboard. As you can see, it's only five squares by five squares. Normal chessboard is eight squares by eight squares. But all I want to do is talk about the uh, knight making uh, a series of moves in a, a number of directions. Now, what is the knight? Now, if you look over here, you can see the knight. Now, you might say to me, Kenny, I'm sorry, that looks like a horse. Well, yeah, in point of fact, the knight rides on the horse. The chess piece is also known You know, the clock just, the screen just went dead, and I don't really appreciate that. We're going to have to work on that factor, aren't we? Have we got a good sound here? Can I just show you, can I show you the, the knight moves? Every time the screen goes blank, I'm just going to curse out uh, Apple. So anyway, here's what the knight, now we see the squares here, right? One, two, three, four, five, all right. Here's what the knight can do. The knight's a very interesting piece, by the way. It's the only piece on the chessboard that can jump over another square. So I could have this knight completely surrounded by other pieces, and it could still jump out two and then one over because that's the way the knight moves remember this please carefully it goes sideways or vertically it doesn't go diagonally it can only go sideways or vertically and it goes let's say one two to the right and then one down or it could go one two to the right and then one up by the same token it could go one over and then two down or one over and then two up and it can go two down and one over or two up and one over you get the idea right so that's the general rule two plus one sideways or vertically one plus two sideways or vertically and after you go in one direction you must make a 90 degree turn and go to, uh, well, if you're going sideways, you're going to go up or down. If you're going up or down, you're going to go sideways. Hope I haven't just confused you right there. Okay, so, fine. Here's our knight. Let's put the knight in the center of the chessboard. I used to that a K because knight begins with K. It's a knight in shining armor, if you will. Come to rescue you from algebra. Now, where can this piece go? So here's what I'm going to do, basically. You know, let's cut to the chase. Let's make this short. Here's my question. How fast can you get to here. How fast can you get to there? We just did some algebra. Because part of algebra, part of algebra is knowing the rules. Okay, what am I allowed to do with the knight? I'm only allowed to do one, two, one in a perpendicular direction, or one and then one, two in a perpendicular direction. That's all I'm allowed to do. How do I get to here? Can I get there in one move? And oh, I, I can't stop after one. If I go one to the side, I still have to go two in a perpendicular direction. You know, if you might want to press pause and see if you can figure out if you got a chess. Well, you know, if you're a chess player, you already know how to do this. But do you know how to do it in the fewest number of moves? That might be a different question. If you're a good chess player, you know how to do it. But I'll tell you something, I couldn't just go boom, boom, boom on the screen and show you how to do it. And that's going to bring us to another point. I know how to get to here in two moves. And I can do it pretty much without thinking. I know exactly where I can go in one move. I can do that pretty much without thinking. Oh, I can do that without thinking at all. This one, I can do almost without thinking. This one? Well, let me show you. Where can I go in one move? I'm going to put a one every place I can go in one move. I can go two over, one down, two over, one up. I can go one over and two up. I can go one over and two up. This is a one. I'm trying to draw a one. I can go one up and two over. I can go two over, one down, and one over and two down. Notice the pretty pattern. 
that's what oops I left one out haha <laughs> see that was a book the the pattern showed me I'd left something out I knew I'd left something out because there's a pattern why would that guy be any different isn't that wonderful isn't mathematics great okay now where can I go in two moves well the easiest thing to do to figure out how to get where you can go in two moves is to figure out from each one of these where can I go well let's see I can go one over and two across I mean one up and two across back to where I was okay right I know if I just went there I can go backwards to the same spot not so interesting I want to know where else can I go in two moves well I can go one over and two up one over two up I can go you didn't see that teacher made a mistake I can I can again because I knew I can go two over and one down I can go to here I can go where else can I go from here well I can go back to where I was so that's kind of boring I don't want to go there now from here what can I do I can go to ah look at that I can go over here or well I can go back there oh I can go one up and two over look at that fantastic or I can go one over and two up uh, from here I can go one over and two up from here I can go one over and two up and once again I'm getting a pattern here and looks like somebody's missing oh how can I get there oh let's see ah from here I can go one over and two down all right so now we're gonna bring our screen back there goes my fire department good friends okay so now what we still have what we still haven't done by the way we're still not here so now those I know pretty well if I'm looking at the chessboard instead of looking at a pen and looking at you on the screen now to get to there I'm gonna tell you a secret well why don't you think about it? you know what I'm gonna let you work on this for a bit press balls think about it let me see what we're gonna do what you come up with I'll just take a pace like I'll be back in three seconds give you time to press balls and then come back all right, I believe that was three seconds. Okay, well, here's what I do. I say to myself, well, you know what? I don't, I'm, I don't know how to get there in three moves. I can't see that in my head. But I can tell you this. Where can I go from here working backwards? In other words, how would I get to here? Or if I was here, where could I get to? And I'm going to look at something and say, well, wait a second. One over, two down. Ah. So I can get to here in one move and then two more I can go backwards boom boom so this is actually three now one of the things we've seen so far is that there's a lot of um, patterns forming here very symmetric patterns if there's one thing over here there's one thing over there so what I'm going to gamble and do is say I can get to here and here and here in three moves and you can prove that on your own if I now here's a question. How do I get to here? Well, we've learned a game now. If I know I can get to here in three moves, and I can get from here to there, I know I can get to here in four moves. Now here's a question. Is there any faster way to get there? Why don't you play around with that, see what you find out. But the point I want to make is that, to a large degree, this is what you're going to be doing in algebra. You're going to have a set of rules. Now this is just one rule. You're going to have 24 30 rules, I don't know, I never really counted them up. You're going to have two or three dozen rules. You're going to have to know which ones you are allowed to apply when, and you're going to need to know uh, exactly how to execute them correctly. Now this has been a very simple example. We've had one rule, and we know how to do it. Two and one, one and two, it's pretty simple. It's basically, it's an L shape, by, by the way. It's the way most people learn it. You can make an L, and your L can be in any funny orientation you like, as long as it's an L, it's good. Uh, so that's the one simple rule. And we still got into some pretty interesting challenges there, when, especially when we got the three one. I couldn't think that through in my head. So I had to use a little trick. I had to work backwards. I said, okay, well, if I want to be here, or if I am here, where can I go to? And what I saw was I could quickly, oh, I could go to the two. That's a, that's a nice L shape right there. And of course, if you look around, you're going to find there are other L shapes I could have gone to to get over here. And that matters in a real chess game because you can't just land on, on your own pieces, and your own pieces might be in some of these places. So you might need to work out a path 
that you can do your three moves and get to this particular place starting from here. And how do you figure it out? Well, you start from here and figure out, well, how, where would I have to be to get there? Oh, you might have to be here. Oh, I know how to get here. So that's working backwards. So when you're working on algebra, I'm not going to say algebra is chess, but at a higher level of abstraction, algebra is problem solving. Problem solving within rules, and you are given a goal that you want to get to. Uh, sometimes in algebra you want to solve for x. Other times in algebra you want to uh, get simplest form. Other times in algebra you want to completely factor an expression. But normally we do that as an intermediate step, as we did here. We went over here to get to here. Often, to, most of the time we're factoring in algebra simply so we can get to a further objective, which is simplest form. So when you're working on algebra, you see all these variables flowing around, you see all these crazy algebra rules, you start to get a little discouraged. Just remember, it's just problem solving. It's just puzzle solving. You're trying to take the rules and apply them consistently and correctly in order to get to an objective. It's a game in the end. And it's a game that means a lot because we've talked before about mathematics and how important it is and how basically it is a scientific instrument that we use right now to basically explore the universe in ways that scientific instruments no longer can because we have learned so much about the universe that the only thing left is mathematics. Fantastic. Thank you for your time. I don't think you're actually going to see this. Bye-bye.